Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So I ask my wife if making love is a chore to her. Not really, she replied. Chores make me feel satisfied afterwards. <laughs> so a man goes to the doctor because his pecker has turned a greenish color. The doctor takes a look and says I'm really sorry but it looks like you have a rare case of Hong Kong dong. I'm afraid the only option is to amputate. The man is in disbelief and goes to get a second opinion. Yup, unfortunately you have got Hong Kong dong. It has to be removed. In desperation, the man books a flight to Hong Kong and finds an English-speaking doctor and explains his case. Oh. Those silly American doctors always so quick to chop, replied the Chinese doctor. There is no need for that. It's going to fall off by itself soon. <laughs> so, a nun and a priest were traveling across the desert when they realized the camel they were using for transportation was on the verge of dying. They set up a makeshift camp, hoping someone would come to their rescue but no help came. Soon, the camel died. After days without being rescued, they accepted their fate. They prayed frequently, of course, and discussed their predicament at length. Finally, the priest said, Sister, I think we're nearing the end, and there's something I've always wanted to experience before I die. I've always wanted to see a woman naked. Would you mind taking off your clothes so I can look at you? The nun thought for a moment, then agreed. As she undressed, she said, You know, father, now that I think about it, I've never seen a man naked either. Would you mind taking off your clothes too? Without hesitation, the priest stripped down. Suddenly, the nun pointed and exclaimed, Father! What is that thing hanging between your legs? The priest, with a patient smile, replied, That, my child, is a gift from God. If I put it inside you, it can create new life. The nun thought for a second, and then said, Well, in that case, forget about me. Stick it in the camel. <laughs> So a man and his wife were driving home one cold night when the wife suddenly asks him to stop the car. There was a baby skunk lying on the side of the road. She got out to check if it was still alive. It was. So she said, it's nearly frozen to death. Can we take it with us, warm it up, and let it go in the morning? Her husband replied, sure, get in the car with it. Once she was back in the car, she asked, where should I put it to keep it warm? He said, put it between your legs. It's nice and warm there. She hesitated and asked, but what about the smell? He grinned and said, just hold its little nose. <laughs> so in a small southern town, the prosecuting attorney called his first witness to the stand, a sweet, elderly, grandmotherly woman. He approached her and asked, Mrs. Jones, do you know me? She smiled and said, Why, yes, I do know you, Mr. Williams. I've known you since you were a boy, and frankly, you've been a big disappointment. You lie, you cheat on your wife, you manipulate people, and you talk behind their backs. You think you're some big shot, but you don't have the sense to realize you'll never be more than a two-bit paper pusher. Yes, I know you. The lawyer was completely shocked. Not knowing what else to do, he pointed to the defense attorney and asked, Mrs. Jones, do you know the defense attorney? She smiled again and said, Why, yes, I do. I've known Mr. Bradley since he was a boy, too. He's lazy, bigoted, and has a drinking problem. He can't build a normal relationship with anyone, and his law practice is one of the worst in the state. Oh, and he cheated on his wife 
with three different women. One of them was your wife. Yes, I know him. The defense attorney nearly fainted. The judge quickly called both lawyers to the bench, leaned in, and whispered, if either of you asks her if she knows me, I'll have you both in the electric chair. <laughs> so, the CIA lost track of its operative Murphy in Ireland. The CIA director said, All I can tell you is his name is Murphy and he's somewhere in Ireland. If you think you've located him, tell him the code words. The weather forecast calls for mist in the morning. If it's really him, he'll answer, yes, and for mist at noon as well. The operative went to Ireland and stopped in a bar in a small town. He said to the barman, maybe you can help me. I'm looking for a guy named Murphy, the bartender replied. You're going to have to be more specific because around here, there are lots of guys named Murphy. There's Murphy the baker who runs the pastry shop on the next block. There's Murphy the banker who's president of our local savings bank. There's Murphy the blacksmith who works at the stables. And as a matter of fact, my name is Murphy too. Hearing this, the operative figured he might as well try the code words on the bartender. So he said the weather forecast calls for mist in the morning. The bartender replied, Oh, you're looking for Murphy, the spy. He lives right down the street. <laughs> so a man went to his appointment with a urologist. As soon as he entered the exam room, he warned the doctor, please don't laugh. The doctor replied, of course I won't laugh. I'm a professional. In over 20 years of practice, I've never laughed at a patient. All right then, the man said, and proceeded to drop his trousers, revealing the tiniest pecker the doctor had ever seen. It wasn't any bigger than a triple A battery. Despite his best efforts, the doctor burst out giggling, eventually falling to the floor in hysterics. It took him 10 minutes to compose himself and get back up. I'm truly sorry, the doctor said, wiping his eyes. I don't know what came over me. I promise, on my honor as a doctor and a gentleman, it won't happen again. Now, what seems to be the problem? The man sighed and said, it's swollen. <laughs> so a muscular, tattooed man with a holstered pistol kicks a saloon door open. Everybody stops and moves aside as he walks up to the bar. He sits down and says to the bartender, I want to exchange money with you for goods and services. A fellow patron says, Wow, I think he means business. <laughs> so a guy went to see a psychiatrist because he was having serious problems with his sex life. The psychiatrist asked him a lot of questions, but wasn't quite getting a clear picture of the issue. Finally, the psychiatrist asked, do you ever watch your girlfriend's face while you're having sex? Well, yes, I did once. And how did she look? Oh, man. She looked really angry. The psychiatrist leaned in, thinking he was onto something. That's very interesting. We should explore this further. Now, you said you've only seen her face once during sex. That seems a bit unusual. How did that happen? The guy replied, Well, she was watching us through the window. <laughs> so a police officer pulls over a guy who's been weaving in and out of lanes. He walks up to the window and says, Sir, I need you to blow into this breathalyzer. The man replies, Sorry, officer, I can't do that. I'm asthmatic. If I blow into that, I could have a bad asthma attack. Okay, says the officer. Then I need you to come down to the station and give a blood sample. I can't do that either, officer. I'm a hemophiliac. I give blood. I could bleed to death. The officer, now a bit suspicious, says, well, how about a urine sample? 
Sorry, officer, I can't do that either. I'm diabetic. If I give a urine sample, my blood sugar might drop dangerously low. Frustrated, the officer finally says, All right, then I need you to step out and walk this white line. I can't do that, officer. Why not? The officer asks. Because I'm drunk. <laughs> so, it was little Johnny's first day of third grade in a new town. As a test, the teacher went around the room asking each student to count to 50. Some did well, counting as high as 30 or 40 with a few mistakes. Others struggled to get past 20, but when it was little, Johnny's turn, he counted past 50, all the way to 100 without a single mistake. Excited, he ran home and proudly told his dad about how well he did. His dad smiled and said, that's because you're from Alabama, son. The next day in language class, the teacher asked the students to recite the alphabet. It's third grade, so most made it halfway through. Some got as far as S or T, but little Johnny rattled off the whole alphabet perfectly. That night, he couldn't wait to tell his dad how great he did. His dad nodded and said, that's because you're from Alabama, son. The following day, after physical education, the boys were taking showers. Johnny noticed that compared to the other boys, he seemed a lot more well endowed. This left him confused. That evening, he went to his dad and said, Dad, all the other boys have tiny ones, but mine is like ten times bigger. Is that because I'm from Alabama? His dad shook his head and replied, No, son. That's because you're 18. <laughs> so a husband and wife were driving from Key West to Boston. After nearly 24 hours on the road, they were exhausted and decided to stop at a hotel for some rest. They checked into a nice hotel, planning to sleep for just four hours before hitting the road again. When they checked out four hours later, the desk clerk handed them a bill for $350. The husband was shocked and demanded to know why the charge was so high. He argued, this is a nice hotel but the rooms aren't worth $350. The clerk calmly explained, that's our standard rate, sir. Unsatisfied, the husband asked to speak to the manager. The manager appeared and explained, sir, the hotel has an Olympic-sized pool and a world-class conference center, all available for your use. But we didn't use them. The man protested, well, they're here. And you could have, the manager replied. He continued, we also have shows featuring top entertainers from New York, Hollywood, and Las Vegas. The man fumed, but we didn't go to any shows. The manager smiled. Well, they were available, and you could have. No matter what amenity the manager mentioned, the husband kept replying, but we didn't use it. Frustrated, the man finally gave up and wrote a check for $50, handing it to the manager. The manager looked at the check and said, Sir, this check is for only $50. That's right, the man replied. I charged you $300 for sleeping with my wife. But I didn't, the manager exclaimed. Well, the man said, she was here and you could have. <laughs> <laughs> so an American sniper was excellent at his job, and he had a unique method. He would yell out an insult at the enemy, and when someone stood up to respond, bang! One less insurgent. After every mission, the company commander would ask, How many insurgents did you take out today? But on this particular day, when asked, the sniper replied, Five killed, sir but I let one go. Let one go? The commander roared. What do you mean you let one go? The sniper shrugged and said, Well, sir, I yelled, Osama is a bastard. 
and this big insurgent stood up and shouted, Hillary is a dumb old hag. I just couldn't shoot a fellow Republican. <laughs> so King Arthur was in Merlin's laboratory, where the good wizard was showing off his latest invention. It was a chastity belt, but it had a rather large hole in the most obvious place. Merlin, this is useless, exclaimed the king. How is this supposed to protect my queen? Ah, sire, just watch, Merlin replied. He took an old, worn-out wand and inserted it into the gaping hole. Instantly, a small guillotine blade came down and sliced the wand clean in half. Merlin, you're a genius, Arthur exclaimed. Now I can leave knowing my queen is safe. With Guinevere securely in the device, King Arthur set off on his quest. Several years passed before the king returned to Camelot. Upon his return, he immediately gathered all his knights in the courtyard for an impromptu inspection. One by one, they dropped their trousers, revealing that every single knight had been, well, damaged all except for Sir Galahad. Sir Galahad, Arthur cried, you, my one true and loyal knight, you alone have remained faithful. Ask for anything, and it shall be yours. But, alas, Sir Galahad was speechless. Ha 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 ha.